I turn stone, middle of the summer and my heart cold My heart gone, trying to turn it off, put it in dark mode My dog gone, who I'm gon' call on Guess I go hard for him, guess I hop off for him I never been one of them niggas, fake the kick and I'm trying to get dizzy I was focused on riches, trying to get out of these next six And I peep game for you niggas, and I peep game for you bitches Just like them niggas turn hoes, and all the hoes turn niggas I never seen this before, that chop they ring like a phone I put it deep in the throat, I tell them Yo, South Africa, we is back, man um, how this, I don't know how to say this name, but I know it's in Africa. Feel me? Metro police officer turned into a ruthless hitman. Let go, man. I love y'all dogs, gang. Feel me? I love y'all dogs. And then, it's something crazy, because the police really be corrupt out there. Like, if they get enough money, they gonna switch on y'all niggas, man. They gonna switch. So, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see what happens. Let's get it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let go. On the 2nd of April 2020, in the small township of Rieger Park, a deceased male body is discovered by locals in a patch of field. The deceased was wearing uniform belonging to the Kerhuleni Metro Police Department. Blood from two bullet wounds in his back stained his police uniform. His firearm was missing, his cell phone was however seemingly placed on his chest. The locals who saw the body called the police, who later called the paramedics to the scene. The deceased would later be identified as 45-year-old Sebastian Gromwald. Sebastian Gromwald was a constable in the Kerhuleni Metro Police Department and was discovered to have served for over 10 years. He was stationed in the city of Germiston on the East Rand and was part of the police's special weapons and tactics unit. Sebastian stayed in the suburb of Buxburg, which is about 10 minutes away from where he was found dead. When police detectives visited the home, they found his girlfriend, Alicia Prince. She was also an Akureleni Metro Police officer. She started telling detectives that she and Sebastian were a couple, and that they were staying together. She also informed the police that the last time she had seen him, was early in the morning, when he was leaving for work. Prince okay. also revealed okay. that a few hours after she heard that he was found dead, Sebastian's friend, Jonathan Skoman, came to the house. She said that Skoman, arrived and removed, guns, ammunitions, and also hard drives from the home CCTV cameras. Mm. Mm. Yeah, bro knows something. This shit, shit, shit is off, man. Why he go? Why he go get the hard drive though? Something's off. Something's off. When he was questioned by police, Skoman gave over this crucial piece of evidence. However, he was not taken into custody. When the police watched the home CCTV footage for that day, they saw Sebastian leaving the house at around 6 a.m. in the morning. But then he returned minutes later. Leaving his car in his driveway, he went inside the house. The footage also showed two of the cars that were parked in Sebastian's driveway at the time. Okay. A BMW sedan and a double cab backy. Police detectives were able to track down these two cars, and they were taken in as evidence. In the backy, investigators found blood stains all over the back, as well as bullet shells from a gun. When they forensically examined the bullet shells, they were able to match them to a R5 rifle. 20 minutes after he went inside his home, his, his girlfriend, right Alicia Prince, is seen coming out the house, removing keys from the ignition of the car, and taking a cell phone from the front seat, before going back inside. So the girlfriend when they tracked the, the rifle down, something. they found it in an Akureleni Metro Police Department car, and the car was registered to Sebastian Gromwald. Mm. This R5 was found hidden in the boot of his car, with the serial number still intact. A ballistic analysis would later reveal that the gun was used in a wave of drive-by shootings in Rieger Park, which left at least five people dead. In August 2020, four months after Sebastian's body was found dumped in a field, Jonathan Skoman was arrested by the police. He became the first suspect of the heinous crime. Skoman was detained for 181 days without bail, after being charged with a variety of crimes, including murder. He would only be released by the Johannesburg High Court because he agreed to cooperate with the police. Mm. He told detectives that he was a traveling salesman and a close friend of Sebastian Gromwald. He further tail. told police of a storage room locker, which Sebastian was renting in Rieger Park. When police went to check out this storage room locker, inside, they found more than 500 Mandrax pills. Two see, 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 I don't, I, that's why I don't like people and that's why I don't trust people, bro. Because people will be with you when you at the high, bro, when you at your high, people be down with you. They talk about all this loyalty and trust. As soon as they get caught, though, they ain't gonna do that time, feel me?
they not gonna they not gonna do shit, bro. Once the person coming in and tell them, yo, you gonna do this many years, they gonna be like, nah, bro, I'm telling. I'm telling. And they gonna give up everything. Semi-automatic pistols, a pump-action shotgun, a dozen of 9mm bullets, and also M26 hand grenades. When Skoman was questioned the by the police, he revealed that Sebastian was a crooked cop, and a gangster who not only assassinated gang rivals, but was also a paid hitman. But you, Skoman you corrupt confessed too. to police that the M26 grenades, which were found in Sebastian's storage room locker, were to be used in the assassination of Mohamed Said, a businessman from the city of Johannesburg. Skoman told the police that both he and Sebastian had followed Said to and from his home on no less than eight times, and at one point, Sebastian followed him into the West Street Mosque in Houghton. Wearing a disguise, and with his hands holding two grenades in his pockets, Sebastian had planned to detonate the grenades in the crowded mosque. However, the attack was called off by the paymaster, according to admissions Skoman made to cops. Muhammad Said was the head of Carnaling Tobacco. Okay, see? Who the See, if you're gonna say it's a paymaster, who the hell is the paymaster? You gotta give up everybody now. If you're gonna blame bro for everything, you're gonna have to tell us who the paymaster is. Has to. One of three companies which dominate the multi-billion rand South African cigarette market. The hand grenades, which were going to be used in his murder, had their origins within the South African National Defense Force. It is unknown how they ended up in the hands of Gronwald and Skoman. When the two finally got a chance to assassinate Said, they unintentionally followed and gunned down the wrong person, in a deadly case of mistaken identity. Businessman Shuaib Doji was traveling on the M1 near Korla Drive, coming from the mosque in Santon, when two men in a backy pulled up alongside his black BMW, and sprayed it with bullets. The businessman died at the scene. This took place in March 2020, a month before Sebastian was found dead. Said and Doji were said to be close friends. They even attended the same mosque, and at one point drove identical cars. They, they look alike. The investigation into Doji's murder ran cold, up until police found the R5 rifle in Sebastian's car. When the police found Sebastian's gun in the boot of his car, hours after his death, they took it as evidence to be forensically examined. They would find out that the rifle was stolen at least two times from the South African police service, before it landed in Sebastian's hands. Small scratches on the cartridges of the weapon, found by police during forensic examination, proved it was used in a series of back-to-back -back drive by shootings in Rieger Park between September 2019 and January 2020, including the murder of Shuaib Doji. Ballistic evidence linked the gun to the murder of Shears Aubrey, who was shot and killed in Erica Street, Rieger Park, on the 18th of September 2019. His vehicle was sprayed with automatic gunfire, and 31 cartridges were discovered by police at the scene. The murder of Antonio Plaitchis, who was shot 23 times near his home on the 12th of December 2019. His girlfriend, Antoinette de Yager, was also wounded in that shooting and died in the hospital. But my question is, like, what, what, what's the motives with these people, though? Like, I hope he explains, like, the motive, or he just recklessly kill, killing these people. I want to know, like, what, what's his beef with these people? The girlfriend? The murder of Michael McKenzie, who was shot killed in a drive-by shooting during the early morning of the 1st of January, 2020. McKenzie was on his way home when he came under fire and lost control of his car. He died at the roadside. And the murder of Gordon Peterson, who was killed leaving a ceremony to unveil McKenzie's tombstone. Peterson was pulling away when bullets riddled his car. He died on the pavement. The last murder connected to Sebastian's R5 was Shuaib Doji's shooting. But it would take months for the police to figure out why he was killed. Before the shooting, Skoman claims that the alleged mastermind of the assassination was in contact with Sebastian while they were pursuing Doji. The it is said that Sebastian texted the man who was thought to have ordered the hit, saying, Olympus has fallen, after Doji was shot dead. The alleged mastermind's response was telling Sebastian that Saeed had not fallen, and he knew this because they were talking to each other on the phone. According to police, Skoman and Sebastian acted on orders to eliminate Muhammad Saeed. The Rieger Park murders, however, were claimed to be acts of revenge. Re That's not weird to y'all? Like, that is weird to me, bro. That is so weird to me, son. That the, the hitman is texting the one that he wants to, to kill. That mean they friends, bro. Out there, yo, bro, that's, yo, this backdoor activity is crazy, bro, because they do the same thing in America, too. They do the same thing in America. They, they be backdooring their friends, too. So, hearing this shit, this shit is crazy, because you never know 
how your friends is. You never know how anybody is thinking. Feel me? But you just never know, like, what's going to happen. That shit is scary. That's why it's hard to trust people. Like, your own friend about to kill you. For what? Revenge for his brother, Mark Gronwald, a drug lord who was shot and killed on the 3rd of December, 2017. According to police, Sebastian was involved in a bloody gang war in Rieger Park before his brutal death. His entanglement in an ongoing gang war in the community in which he grew up in was inevitable. His two younger brothers, Mark Gronwald and Sean Gronwald, were convicted murders and had served long periods of time in prison. It's alleged that in Rieger Park, the three brothers were feared members of a notorious drug dealing gang. They called themselves the Dokes. According to police, the gang was involved in everything, including stealing cars, selling drugs, and they robbed cigarette trucks. Sebastian was said to be their insurance policy, since he worked at the Kurileni Metro Police Department. He is said to be the one plotting the robberies and heists. He would then attend the crime scenes first, to ensure nothing would link back to his brothers. With their inside man, the Dokes allegedly controlled territory in Rieger Park and lived the high life. According to locals, the brothers always had money and the best cars. They were considered gods in Rieger Park. Five years younger than his policeman brother, Mark Gronwald, aka Bin Laden, was said to be the leader of the criminal his enterprise. Bin Laden. He earned the nickname Bin Laden because of his brutality in controlling drug territory and his deafness in evading the police. In 2004, he escaped to Johannesburg courtroom before his trial for murder, attempted murder, and armed robbery. He was recaptured months later. He was ultimately sentenced to 15 years in prison, but was granted early release. He was however shot and killed in Rieger Park on the 13th of December 2017. His murder, setting his brother on a killing spree that claimed six lives. The youngest and only surviving brother, Sean Gronwald, has a deadly past. In 2005, at just the age of 23, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for a gang-related murder. He too, served only a portion of his sentence before going back to his previous way of life. As of now, Sean is in custody for a 2018 murder, and he is yet to go to trial. The lawyer who was supposed to be defending Sean Gronwald in his murder case was Daniel Witz, one of the top criminal defense lawyers in the country. Daniel Witz was also defending Jonathan Skoman in his case for the oh, murder of Sebastian both. Gronwald and the murder of Shuei Doji. In October 2021, just a few weeks before Skoman was to be indicted and given a trial date, the National Prosecution Agency unexpectedly withdrew the murder charges against him. Oh, no explanation shit. or reason was provided. According to the state, however, Skoman was just a pawn in the criminal underworld, and without his confessions, police would not have exposed Sebastian's secret double life. The killings which were tied to Sebastian showed a collision between law enforcement and crime. One of the many examples of a South African police officer working side by side with criminals. Yeah, that's crazy, son. That's crazy. Easy. The drugs and money out there, bro. Because if you a good drug dealer and you got money, the police is probably going to be on your side. But I always want to know who's the um, the people that, the, 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 the ones with the money that's really doing it, though. Feel me? I understand he was with the gang, but he was also texting somebody that had more power. They never exposed those people, though. Feel me? That's why, I'm, that's why I'd be like, it might be like the upper people, like the, his department, maybe his department, feel me? Somebody in his department that's close to the other guy, like, that, that shit really be fucking my head up, because it'd be like, those are his friends, bro. Damn, son, but let me know how y'all niggas feel, man. Let me know how y'all feel, put in the comments, hit the like button, the subscribe button, drop some more videos in the comments. I'm about to do this one right now, the tragic outcome of K-Town Wars on gang, feel me? So... Watch that next video, and you already know the vibes, gang. Okay? Give life a new meaning when you're dreaming of shit, boy, dream. I'm out of it, gang. Fake niggas, we don't do those. Fake niggas, we don't do those. Heart cold, heart cold. Weirdos, weirdos.